Hi, this is Michael Altos, and we are finishing up our discussion about psychiatric and CNS drugs, and this is part four. The last set of drugs we're going to talk about in this session are drugs for Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a degenerative CNS disorder, which manifests with symptoms that include tremor, rigidity, and slowness of movement. Patients also have autonomic dysfunction and develop dementia. Parkinson's is due to insufficient formation of dopamine in the brain, especially in the substantia nigra. One of the main drugs used to treat Parkinson's disease is called levodopa, brand name Cinemet. Levodopa is a precursor to dopamine. The idea is that patients who have Parkinson's disease aren't synthesizing enough dopamine, so we want to give them dopamine exogenously. However, dopamine cannot cross the blood-brain barrier. So instead, we give a precursor called levodopa. Levodopa is able to cross the blood-brain barrier. Once it crosses the blood-brain barrier, the enzyme dopa decarboxylase converts it to dopamine. Now, dopa decarboxylase also exists in the systemic circulation. So why doesn't levodopa get converted into dopamine before it crosses the blood-brain barrier? And the answer is because we usually give it together with carbidopa, which is a medication that prevents the decarboxylation of the levodopa. And then the levodopa crosses the blood-brain barrier, while the carbidopa does not. And then once it's crossed the blood-brain barrier, the levodopa is converted into dopamine. The most common side effect of levodopa is probably orthostatic hypotension. Patients who abruptly stop taking their cinemet may develop acute Parkinsonian symptoms or even neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Cinemet is often taken three to four times a day. And I have developed the practice of asking all my patients when they had their last dose of their cinemet and ask them what happens if they miss a dose or two. Because since this is an oral medication, we want to make sure they've taken the drug before surgery. And if it's going to be a long surgery, we may consider giving them a dose of the drug in the operating room, and that would probably need to be done through a nasogastric tube. Now, patients who are taking levodopa, which is designed to increase dopamine in the central nervous system, should probably not be treated with drugs that are dopamine antagonists. So, so those would be drugs like haloperidol or droperidol. And so they can actually cause Parkinsonism in any patient, but especially in patients who have Parkinson's disease. Other drugs that have dopamine antagonist actions include metoclopramide or Reglan and promethazine or phenergan. And we'll talk about those drugs again in our section on anti-emetic drugs. Other drugs used in the treatment of Parkinson's disease include other dopamine agonists, that is, other drugs besides dopamine that bind to and activate the dopamine receptor. And those include drugs like bromocryptine and pergolide. Other non-dopamine-related drugs that are used in the treatment of Parkinson's disease include anticholinergic drugs, like benzotropine, which is called cogentin. And these drugs help restore acetylcholine dopamine balance. They are especially helpful for the treatment of tremor and for salivation, but they don't help very much with the muscle rigidity that we see in Parkinson's disease. Another drug that's commonly used is amantadine, which is actually an antiviral drug, but it may help facilitate release of dopamine and delay reuptake. Finally, a drug we discussed earlier in this session, selegiline, which is an MAO inhibitor, specifically an MAOB inhibitor. And remember that while the MAOA enzyme was involved in metabolism of all sorts of different catecholamines, the MAOB inhibitor really does not metabolize nor epi or any of the other catecholamines. That's it for this discussion about CNS and psychiatric drugs. 
please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next round of videos.